Really quick, we want to let you know that we are going to be in Pigeon Forge at the Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion, the 25th, 26th, 27th. Come by the Barnes booth and see us. We'll be hanging out. Look forward to seeing you there. Get one of these. All right, good morning. It is another day of working in the shop. We're going to be working on the heavy wrecker today, the world's largest off-road wrecker, for those of you that don't know. Today, we're going to be working on the axles and welding some more brackets. Um, we're going to be kind of taking it apart right now so that we can do that stuff. Ed's squeaky chair, in case you missed that. How are you doing today, Ed? Oh, good day, good day. It's clear out there, no wind for a change, no rain for a change, so it'll be a good day. Ed says it's gonna be a good day, so you might as well mark that right down in your daily planner. Who still carries a planner? Hey, Skeeter, what are you doing? Uh, gonna wire wheel these axles, get them ready to paint and weld. What are we doing, Lizzie? Welding. This is a whole different view from under here. All right, so while Skeeter's outside grinding those axles off, Lizzie's gonna be in here finishing welding up these brackets, the lower link brackets. All this oil is transmission oil. Every time we pick this up, it pours out of the back of that transmission. So we should probably get that fixed. So rust preventive coating. Yeah. All right, see if you can weld these starting at the back. Come up like an inch on each side and then stop. so hunched over because it doesn't go any higher that i can stand completely up i don't know if i want weld sitting down either <laughs> i've done that before and sparks get all over my lap then when i put my helmet down i'm trying to see up where i'm welding and i'm like this and i can't see so i'm like turning sideways and welding like this so if my welds look horrible it's because i can't see where i'm, where I'm welding i'm sure they look great Skater, what did you do? Made some giant jewelry. Yeah, you did. Look at those. <laughs> Lizzie will have those link brackets welded up here in a little bit. And then when they cool off, we can put these so back So it kind of looks like a boat. Did you notice? With no axles underneath it. Remember, was it, was it the show Viper? Or was it Knight Rider? Where it like pops off, the wheels come up, and then it like, can go on the water. I know Knight Rider could drive on water, but because I don't think they spent a lot of time on the visuals of that. It just went anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell us, was it Viper that Skeeter's talking about with the boat? Yeah, because the Viper car would like turn into a monster truck. It would go into a really fast car. It did all sorts of stuff. Matt, come look at this. Lizzie learned a new technique. <laughs> I showed her the technique. She did it better than I did it. <laughs> Trevor, Trevor comes over. He's like, you dipped down right there. I'm like, Matt did that. <laughs> Take it back, I didn't, Trevor. I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so just let that cool. Okay. Come back and start this one. Exactly the same thing. Oh, you excited, Lizzie? Yeah. The wor I know it what's wrong. It's so hot under here. Yeah, well, we had a problem. That's been pumping hot air into here. I know. Because we didn't have the water on. <laughs> so the swamp cooler was just putting 105 degree <laughs> air in instead of 85 degree. And that's a big difference. That matters. So we get a lot of questions about ventilation in here. So whenever we're welding, we have this fan on and it's a swamp cooler. So it's blowing semi-cooled, very humid air into here. And then we have all kinds of air leaks here. We have that ventilation fan up there. We've got the doggy door right there. And then all over the top of the roll up door, it's like five inches by, <laughs> by whatever, 10 feet. And when those are on and you're welding, it stays really clear in here. You got there, Skeeter. 
of hitches because we got three of them going on the back of there. Plus, we have the two big pintle hitches. All right, so Skeeter's getting those cut. I'm going to show you how those are going here. So we've got our main recovery one that goes in the middle, and then we got two that go out here on the outside. Why do we have two on the outside? I'll show you later. Because we can. So since I'm in a big fight with Rory Irish and Trell Mater, I had to have my own welder. This is Greg and Aaron from Premier Power Welder. And look at this, powder coated yellow, just for me. This is going on the heavy wrecker. Speedy delivery. I'm gonna have to learn to stick again. Yeah. It'll, yeah. it'll come back. So yeah. easy. I'm super excited. This is, so are we. There's so many jobs where I've had to drag a trailer out oh, to somebody yeah. and drag them back here to the shop. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you watched that one time when Rory was here. We were coming back from King of the Hammers. I got a call and Rory was driving through town. I'm like, Rory, I need oh, your yeah, help. Yeah. I need your help. And he went out that. there and welded that up. Yeah, that'll be cool. I'm going to have a workbench back here and a vice and stuff. That'll be absolutely perfect. And a drill press and a lathe and a mill. Uh -huh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so you got this all tacked in. You got a root pass. Yeah. Okay. It's getting there. <laughs> All right, that was a good day of working on the wrecker. We got a lot done today. Lizzie got a lot welded up. Skeeter got those axles prepped. We'll be hitting those hard tomorrow. We got a bunch of welding left to do with the axles out, so we're gonna get after that too. I don't know. I think we should start all over. This is too much fun. <laughs> it's going too fast. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, it is another day, and we are continuing welding on the wrecker. We got Skeeter suited up. We got Lizzie suited up. There's quite a bit of welding to do here. We've got them laid out on this. Lizzie's got to finish brackets the bottom brackets here. On the back and the front, and then we've got the sides. So anyway, um, they're going to be welding all those on, like 100% on the bottom, and then when we take the cab off, then we'll weld them again on the top. They're going to be bombed in there pretty big. All right, let's get after it. Welding time. I'm hanging by a thread. Just kidding. I'm standing on my own two feet. But I am gonna need a neck massage after this because I'm sitting here welding like this. So here we have Skeeter's side. Is this the part where we give all the excuses? So we were welding, we were like <laughs> So every time one of us would stop to look at what we're welding, then your helmet would still be going. So you couldn't see. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me show you only the good ones. That's a good one right there somewhat. That's decent, and that one's pretty nice, actually. Yeah, that one's pretty good. Let's look at your side, Lizzie. Go ahead, it looks horrible. Most of it. What? What do you mean, most of it? There's a few in here. Look at those. It's okay. fine. Skeeter's been begging for snow cones again, so here we go. Doing snow cones again. I got watermelon and strawberry. My two favorite fruits. How is it, Ed? Good. Lime, half strength. <gasps> it is another day of working on the wrecker and it's welding again today. We're gonna be welding on the hitch uh, first off and then we're gonna weld some other things. You're gonna have to find out what those are because I don't even know what they are yet. Before we put the axles back in, I wanna get all the welding that is gonna be easier to do right now. We got three hitches, Perfect. Matt. Right. Yep. Well, three technically hitches. five. One, two, three, four, five. I count the winch as a hitch. Oh, six. <laughs> <laughs> so this one we're going to be putting right here just for more strength. Then we'll hook it in right here. And we'll do the same thing on this side. It'll all be tied together and very, very strong. Why are you putting three hitches on the back of this? Because you've got the main one, right, for the hardest pulling. And then you've got other ones for, like, uh, other your, reasons. Your wheel lift thing, you know? Okay, they're gonna get after it. All right, so we need a fairly simple, elegant way to get the cab off of this. Fairly easy. So Skeeter, show us what's going on here. We make little mini receivers right here on our little cab corners. And then we just come in here with the lift. Whoop. So we got two on the front, two on the back. And our wiring is super simple to disconnect and everything else also. So it'd be pretty fast operation. I hope so. All right, Lizzie, what's next? Let's see what you've done here. 
I got this hitch receiver, welded all the way on, and now it's time for the other one. So we should have put this uh, cab mount, lifting mount on before we put the skid plate on. But we'll get it. We could just reach up there and weld it on if these weren't on here, but we're gonna be reaching up in here. I need two elbows. Okay, Skeeter, you wanna hold that other side up? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's good. All right, so that's in there. Okay. Oh, that's gonna be strong enough to get this off. All I have left on this one is this stitch right here and then the full pass out there. It looks pretty good. Hey, it's Johnny boy. Hey. What did you bring me? Don't, no, don't, don't tell you, me, don't tell I me. I gave you some shame. Don't tell me, I'm gonna bite into it. Let's see if you can tell what it is. The blindfold challenge, not even gonna look at it. I hope it's not the hamburger, because if it is, I need to take the pickles out first. Mm. What is it? So I thought it was. Some people think I don't like pickles. I love pickles. I hate Wendy's pickles. They taste like dirty laundry smells. So Johnny Boy came when I was in a little meeting. He wants to ride the Rokon, and this rope was broken, so he's fixing it right now. I fixed it, but it broke again, and so now I'm putting a new one on this time. And he brought me some breakfast. Well, this is amazing, Lizzie. That worked. I think this is going to be more than adequate. Good job. Did you get her? I just finished putting it back together. We took it for a spin around the yard. <laughs> sense of balance here. <laughs> <laughs> It starts and runs good now. So Johnny Boy is here all the way from Willa. So are you gonna help us work on this today? Sure. I'm here to help. Just like the government. Here to help. <laughs> what is this? Just a heat sink style cooler. And this is like a more elaborate version. It's got internal fins. I don't think these will even come close to competing with a radiator style, but right. they're very durable and they're just tough. I need all this room in here for my links. I don't want to impede this hole too much, but you know, I could do something like that or something like this. This is also an option right there. Well, half of it's not working when it's tucked up in there though. Let me show you what I've got working. So I don't have temperature gauges on any of these. Yeah. And your power steering's like kind of like an automatic transmission. So like right. 180 degrees, you can spike it up to whatever, 220 or yeah. 230 and be okay. So I've got this one out here. I can come out, you know, it's hot. Like you're not gonna rest on it, but you can grab it and your hands aren't sizzling. My fluid's not getting dark very fast. Yeah. So I think I'm, I think I'm running these plenty cool. Yeah. Now this one has a hydro booster on the brakes and it's right here. See, that one's halfway blocked too. But same thing, I'm not running hot. So I talked to the guys at PSC and they talk about when to change the fluid. And I'm like, I've been running my fluid for like almost two years. He's like, oh, you should probably change it. And he took the lid off and looked down. He's like, oh no, yours looks great. So I'm apparently not cooking the fluid as much as most people are. Basically where we're at is I've got to put a cooler on it and watch it. But I don't want more than I need. And I'm fighting for space here. All right, so we're gonna see if we have enough clearance to mount this right here. We decided that's like a good compromise of being in the airflow without really impeding it. And we don't even know if this is enough to do what we need to do. We don't even know how much we need. The thing about coolers is we can add them later. People really like how the more Vare sounds. So I'm gonna be putting the same mufflers on this. They're uh, Flowmasters Laminar Flow series. So this is what the more Vare sounds like. <laughs> sounds exactly like that. People love it. <laughs> Did you just snort? Yeah, this is funny. <laughs> All the work that can be done that we've thought of has been done. So we're going to put the axles underneath there. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure we'll have to paint them.
Okay. Will you go get me that cooler? I think that's our home. I think so too. We're going to run this cooler right here. See if it does any good. All right, this is the one that I think is way off but I don't know where to put it because this axle's not located. The front one should be completely located. So let's take a second and try to figure out if it really is. And then once we find out it's located, then let's pull off of it to do this one. So you gotta true up one of them first. Yeah. But how do you make sure your wheels are straight? Well, I, we, all we do is pull off. Oh, parallel it off the frame. Yeah. Perpendicular it to the frame, whatever. Yeah, so we're pulling off of these. Gotcha. Okay, let's figure this out. So, Johnny Boy just came up with a brilliant plan, and that is since the frame is square, but we can't use the front because it's it's just not in the right place, we can measure off from the front, make a mark back here, and then measure off of that mark. Brilliant! That's what we're gonna do. Okay, don't go doing this suburban style. Like this needs to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying about the suburban? So I'd go back as far as you can, I guess. 70 and a half. How close are those plates to each other? Uh, about an inch. That's <laughs> not too bad. <laughs> were they eyeballed? Yeah. And here you were saying not to do it suburban style. Well, I wanted to drive down the road straight. I don't care if it's crooked, I just want it to drive straight. <laughs> For 51 and one quarter, exactly. Ooh, we're not square. So we are at 52 and one eighth. This is gonna be the most boring thing you've ever seen because getting these four links lined up is just this terrible, long, frustrating, exasperating thing. We're gonna time lapse this to spare you the gory details. Check this one final time. Hey, you gotta go under. One final time. 155 and 5 eighths. One fifty-five and three eighths. That's close enough. No, I'm happy with that. Alright, so we've got this setting on its wheels and we've got the axles located the best they ever have the entire time. So I'm happy with that. We've still got to take them off a couple more times. I know, it's so frustrating. It's just part of the process. So big thanks to Johnny Boy for coming down today and helping us do that. Are you just passing through? Just passing through is just a little bit of fun for the day. Look. Got lots of welding done. Got all of the overhead welding that we needed to get done underneath it. There's still a little bit more. And we'll be able to do more after we pull the cab off, but tons of welding, tons of fun. When we get done with all that welding, there's gonna be a little bit more welding and then a lot more welding. <laughs> <laughs> and then more taking it apart. Yeah. Back together. Take it apart, put it together, take it apart, put it together. So that's the next step. All those things. Thanks for watching. Okay, we've got a special delivery for Matt's kids. <laughs> I'm making a derby lawnmower. So Paul's kids and my kids have got this idea that they're gonna build some lawnmowers and they're gonna crash them. And Johnny Boy's enabling this. I went and picked it up for him. Can you believe that? 